Chunk 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 what I mean by that is that the residuals of the system go to zero, or within a certain tolerance. How we do this depends on what solver you use, but generally want to obtain convergence as fast and as computationally efficient as possible. This topic firmly deals with the modeling focus in this course. We'll go through a few topics here. Uh, I'll first introduce the basic idea of convergence, and then I'll show some graphical examples of how to tell when a system is converged and, and what that means and how you can change that. And then lastly, I'll give some examples using OpenMDO codes to show you what convergence looks like in the terminal and what that means for your codes. So first, let's start with the basic idea of convergence. What do I mean by convergence? I'm going to show a general linear system here. This might be something that you recognize from undergrad where it's AX equals to B, where A is a matrix, X is a vector, and B is a vector as well. So here we have a matrix that's being multiplied by some state vector, in this case X, and we're trying to get it equal to the right-hand side, which is B. And when I say a linear system, this, this is what I mean. This is kind of the general form of it. We have all these coefficients in the A matrix, these states in the X vector, and then B is also a vector. Now I'm talking about linear systems because it's kind of easier to understand. You might have seen them in undergrad math and other courses, but I want to be extremely clear here. Solvers are useful for both nonlinear and linear systems, and you need them for both. Here's an example of a nonlinear system. We have three equations, three unknowns, and they're not linearly related. You know, they, they have some different powers, the square roots multiplying each other. And this is a more complex system than a linear system to converge. You could try to solve this by hand for x, y, and z. That could be very challenging. Or you could try to converge it computationally using a nonlinear solver. But let's go back to this idea of having the ax equals to b, this linear system. I'm going to slightly rearrange this by subtracting b from both sides. And that allows us to say ax minus b equals 0, which equals the residual of x. So in the beginning, I mentioned that residuals are what we're trying to converge to 0, and that holds true. Because once we converge the residual to 0, we know the solution for ax equals to b. We know what x should be. Now, I want to stress again, this is only for linear systems, what I'm saying, but solvers apply for all linear and nonlinear systems. So imagine this generalizing the idea of, of converging the residual to 0 for any type of system. So now, how do we tell when a system is converged? Now, I've got a graphical representation here of the residual on the y-axis and the solver iteration on the x-axis. These are just some dummy problems that I pulled from the OpenMGO documentation to kind of highlight what this means. When I say converge, I mean that we're generally trying to hit a tolerance, not always zero. When I say that we're trying to hit a tolerance, I mean that we will accept a little bit of inaccuracy in the solver solution. This might be because of machine precision or how much we actually care about the answer. So we're trying to get the residual down to this tolerance level, our accepted value of zero. What does this mean? Let's talk about it. So here's an example of a Newton solver, which has a bad guess, and I'll get more into this later. But just know for now that you can set up solvers and you can ask them to solve a system and they cannot do it. They can fail. They can say, hey, I, I don't know what to do here. In this case, the residual actually decreases a little bit and then drastically increases. It kind of blows up. And what this means is that the, the initial guess that we had for the Newton solver is quote unquote bad. We kind of didn't set up the solver for success. We asked it to try to do something that it couldn't and try to solve a system without being close enough to the solution to know where to go. This is because Newton's method is based on a kind of gradient approximation for the system. And I'll have a link in the description to more info about Newton's method math and a few other lessons related to this. But that's what convergence doesn't look like. Now let's look at another example. Here is another example from the same problem where we have the residual and it's converging for a little bit, but then it kind of stalls. It gets stuck at a certain place and it can no longer, it can no longer change X to get the residual value any lower. We see this often when the solver is bounded by something. Maybe one of the, the state variables has a bound on it. You say the, the voltage cannot go below zero. You say the amps cannot go below zero and it gets stuck, for instance. So what this means is that your problem may be ill-formulated. It, it may not be solvable. You may be setting up the solver again for, for not success here. So you would want to change your bounds in this case or change something else. But this is one example of what convergence doesn't look like. Again, we're trying to hit this tolerance. If it stalls out here, you're never going to hit that tolerance. So that's not a great sign. Let's take another stab at this. So here is the Newton's method converging without solved subsystems on. And so this is a detail. Again, you don't need to worry about some of these, these options that I'm portraying here. If you know about them, that's great. But you don't need to know about them. Just know that we're tweaking some of the options here to try to get this system to converge. Here, we start with a, a higher residual. And we're able to actually converge this. It kind of iterates, it decreases over time. I want to highlight that the y-axis is, is logarithmic again. 
So what this actually means is that after 15 iterations, we hit the tolerance that we we're trying to hit with the Newton solver. It's making good progress every time. We like what we're seeing here. This is good. I would consider this fully converged. But can we do better? Like I mentioned in the main message in the beginning, we're always trying to do better. We're always trying to converge faster. So here we have the Newton's method with solve subsystems on. Again, I have a link in the description about more information about what these options mean and when you should use them. But for now, just know that we're tweaking the options and we can change how this system converges. Here we see, okay, the residual decreases after the first step, and then it goes up a little bit, but then it goes down and we're okay. And eventually we hit our tolerance much faster than we did before. Now we can continue to tweak our settings here and we can add a line search to the Newton's method. This adds a little bit computationally, but it allows the, the system to converge in fewer iterations. Now I want to stress here, on the x-axis I'm showing iterations here. This is not computational cost, it's simply the iterations of the nonlinear solver. If we were to plot based on computational cost, these would all be shifted in individually different ways. This is because each iteration takes different time based on the settings that you use. So why am I showing you five different ways that the solver does or doesn't converge the system? I wanted to show you the, the full gambit of when you have a bad gas and the, it explodes, the solver doesn't converge to anything. In fact, it, it might nan out or air out. And also when the solver converges very quickly in just four or five iterations. All of these are kind of different outcomes that you can see, and they're not exhaustive for what your solver could look like. Convergence looks like anything in this purple, green, or blue lines where we get below the tolerance, and non-convergence is anything where we do not meet that tolerance. Generally, if you have a system and it's not converging, you want to figure out why it's not converging. You want to figure out if you could give it better guesses, if it's a Newton system, maybe it's hitting a boundary, maybe the, there's no actual solution to the system. I've had it sometimes where you set up a linear or non-linear system and there's no actual solution. Here, the solver would fail because there's no solution at all. You can't expect convergence if you're formulating a problem where there is no answer. Now that we've looked at this graphically, I will transition into what convergence looks like in the terminal. I'm showing you here a portion of the accompanying Python notebook for this lesson. Let me explain what we're looking at. Here, we set up a very simple problem, and this problem includes an implicit subsystem. This problem analyzes an electrical circuit, and it comes from the OpenMDO doc page. I've included a link to the documentation below. Here, what we're really interested in is taking a look at the solver performance and what that means. So we simply add a model in OpenMDO, and then we set the solver. Additionally, we set some values for the solver, so that we're starting from an initial point that makes sense for the solver. In this case, we're using a Newton solver, and then we also set some initial values so that the Newton solver is well posed. But let's take a look at the output here. If we run this, and we're just running a model here, we're not doing the optimization, we're just running analysis, let's take a look at what the solver does. We're looking at a group called circuit, and this makes sense because we added the group called circuit right here, and we attached the solver right here, and we're interested in seeing the convergence of the solver. So this is telling us that we have a nonlinear solver. That's what NL stands for. It's the Newton solver in this case. And here are the iteration numbers, zero onward. We then have first the absolute residual and then the relative residual. So the absolute residual is the actual difference in the state's value between what it should be and what we're actually seeing right now in the current nonlinear system. The relative residual is always starting at one and then it should decrease. You can imagine for some systems, you might have very huge state values. So the absolute residual might be very big and the relative would always be one no matter what. This is helpful when you're not sure about what kind of state values you're dealing with and you want to set a tolerance accordingly. So here we take a look at the outputs. We see the Newton starts at step zero, one, two, three, four. First, it increases the residuals, which is a little bit you know, counterintuitive. It's trying to solve the system and it takes a, a step and the answer actually gets worse. The residuals get worse. But then over time, it slowly converges the system. And we see that it says, okay, Newton converged in this case in 17 steps. Looks great. We see that the, the absolute residual and the relative residual are very, very small in this case. We will accept this as, as a converged result. So if you ever see this in one of your OpenMDO models, this means that a solver is converging some coupling within the system. Again, this is useful for any implicit system or anything where we even have explicit components that are coupled together with backwards coupling. In the case of a Newton solver, we need to start the states in an initial condition that makes sense. We can't just throw anything willy-nilly. We can't have everything be zeros often. It would be very challenging for a Newton solver to converge something without a, a good initial guess. And let me give a quick example of that. Uh, if we scroll down here and, and we take a look at the, the values that we're setting here, Again, it doesn't really matter what these values are in terms of what the circuit is doing, but just know that these are some bad initial guesses. We take a look at what the solver is doing now in the output, and we see, okay, we start at the same point as above. However, now, bam, the first step is terrible. It's horrendous. Are you seeing this number here? It looks terrible. It says E152. That's a huge number. Essentially, the Newton solver exploded. We started from a bad guess, and it just couldn't do anything with it. And in fact, it had so many numerical difficulties that we had a huge increase in the residuals, like a monstrous 
unfathomable increase in the residuals. It then decreases this, but it's already way off the mark. It's, it's so far off the mark that it, it just fails. And so here, this is just a, a little example of, okay, up, up here we saw that solver convergence looks nice when it's like this. We know that this is a good setup. In the beginning, it, it takes a step that's maybe bad, but that's okay. It, it converges in the end. But here we see, okay, this is terrible. This is not a converging solver. This is, this is not going to help us solve the coupling within this system. And so I want you to be able to recognize, hey, okay, my residuals, one, they're not going down, and two, they're huge. That's the sign of a, a solver not really converging the system. Feel free to play around with some of these initial guesses, see how it converges differently, change some of the solver settings. Uh, all of this is also relevant to a few other lessons. One of them is types of solvers and when to use them. I recommend that you check that out. I'll provide a link in the description below. And then also uh, how to debug your Newton solver when it's not converging. Of course, this is relevant for some of the examples that I'm showing here. These are very simple examples with a, with a kind of cookie cutter circuit case. Here we have the output from my PyCycle group. PyCycle is an engine modeling code made in OpenMDAO. In PyCycle, it's very easy to make extremely complex models. Additionally, we need to solve these models and they often have nested solvers. Let me first highlight some of the n squared diagrams corresponding to a PyCycle model. We have three top level groups, the design group, OD full power and OD part power. Let's take a look at just one of these groups here. I'm gonna scroll back to the left here. Let's take a look at just the design group. And here we see, okay, this one Newton solver, a bunch of nonlinear run ones, so we don't have solvers on these, and then an inner nested Newton solver. If we take a look here, okay, there's that coupling that we're resolving with that nested Newton solver, and here's that coupling that we have at the top level. So I'm only showing you this to kind of drive home the point of how complicated some of these pi cycle models are. Let's go back now and show some of the convergence history from a run of this model. We see at the top level, we have this design group, and it's converging this Newton method that I showed over here. Again, if we look at the design here, okay, there's this top level Newton solver. Within here, we have other nested solvers, and here's that nested solver here. You can see it's got the plus and it's indented a little bit to show that this is one of the nested solvers. This one converges into the next one. We have multiple line searches going on here. Here we have a bounds check line search. Here we have an Armijo Goldstein line search. Again, I don't want to delve into the physicality of the system or, or why we're using the certain options that we are, but just know that we have multiple nested solvers. As I scroll down here, we see some good convergence here. We see the, the iterations, you know, okay, we started 17, 8, 4, the, the residuals decrease. Eventually, we get below a certain tolerance, and it says Newton converged. That's great. If we continue to scroll down, it's looking good so far, but if I get down to the bottom here, please bear with me, we see something happen. We see in the off-design group, the ideal flow here is converging. Okay, looks good. It says Newton converged. And then the top-level Newton solver uh oh, it NAND out. It says, okay, here on Newton, we have residuals and they contain either infinity or NANDs. Well, this is terrible for numerics. That means something crashed, we don't know what, and we have to debug it. This is not what convergence looks like, I guess, obviously. If you see a, an iteration and you see some NANDs in the residual, uh oh, you have a problem and you need to resolve it. So previously, all these examples I show of good convergence are what you want to see. And if you see something like a failure or you see some NANDs in your, in your residuals, you don't want to deal with that. Please check out the How to Debug Solvers lecture for more information about how to deal with this. So to recap, converging a system means that all coupling and implicit interactions have been resolved. I tried to stress during this lesson that the best solver convergence and the best settings are highly problem dependent. They really vary case to case. I wish I could tell you that you must always hit a certain tolerance and, and how to set your settings to do that, but unfortunately I cannot. For very complex systems, you might need nested solvers and there you need to care about the residuals for each one of them. And for even simpler systems, you might not need a solver at all. But to be clear, if you have any sort of implicit interactions or coupling within your system, you need to converge your residuals to zero within that system using a solver. This ensures that your answer is correct and viable given the systems that you've defined. I can't stress enough that this is just one kernel on one cob across many ears of corn in the field of solver understanding. To accurately model complex systems with multiple groups and nested solvers, it takes a lot of practice. I highly encourage you to check out other linked lectures in the description below to see what types of solvers exist, when to use them, what it means for your models, and some of the math behind them, and all sorts of other details that are very important to understand when solving multidisciplinary systems. As always, make sure to mash those like and subscribe buttons. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, thank you for watching.